أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه رب اشرح لصدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale e Nur by Bedu Uzzaman Said Nursi podcast series This is Mustafa Tuna You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org Inshallah in this episode we will start the 14th word and a rough translation of the section we will be reading uh, will also be posted at this website so this is a new treatise the 14th word and uh, like the previous two uh, treatises that we read the the 12th and the 13th words it is also about the quran ustad nursi in this treatise takes some of the verses of the Quran that have been subject to controversy, that have been, if you will, challenged, and shows us the beauty, the wisdom, the truth, the miraculousness in them. So, Bismillah, the 14th word. Bismillah rahman rahim Alif Lam Ra كتاب أحكمت آياته ثم فصلت من لدن حكيم خبير ألف لام را This is a book whose verses are perfected then set out clearly from the one who is all wise, all aware This is the first verse of Surah Al-Hud the 11th chapter of the Quran Alif Lam Ra, this is a book whose verses are perfected, then set out clearly from the one who is all wise, all aware. The word for uh, that is translated here, and I'm mostly following Abdul Halim's uh, translation or interpretation, is Urhkimet. Uh, um, so that can also be understood as like, fortified, uh, yeah, fortified, uh, but he has. Uh, chosen perfected and he is a quite reliable translator therefore i'm going to keep that in here alif lam ra this is a book of course this is a reference to the quran whose verses are perfected then set out clearly from the one who is all wise all aware and of course that is god quran hakimin ve Kur'an'ın müfessir hakikisi olan hadisin bir kısım yüksek ve ulvi hakaikına çıkmak için teslim ve enkıyadı noksan kalplere yardım edecek basamaklar hükmünde o hakikatlerin bir kısım nazirelerine işaret edeceğiz. Ve hatimesinde bir ders ibret ve bir sır inayet beyan edilecek. O hakikatlerden haşir ve kıyametin nazireleri 10. sözde, bilhassa 9. hakikatinde zikredildiği için tekrara lüzum yoktur. Yalnız sair hakikatlerden numune olarak 5 mesele zikrederiz. As steps to help the hearts that are deficient in the submission and acquiescence needed to climb to the, to the high and lofty truths of the wisdomful Quran and the prophetic traditions which are its true interpreters. So the prophetic traditions are the Quran's true interpreters. We will point to some examples of those truths. This is pointing to a sickness in the heart. Uh, perhaps the intellect too, but the, the origin should be in the heart. Uh, perhaps the, the microbe comes from the nafs and Satan, but the sickness takes root in the heart. Once we believe, once we say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, we should develop full confidence in the truth of the message that comes to the Prophet from God 
and conveyed to us by the Prophet. Sometimes there may be places, there may be parts in the verses and perhaps in some of the prophetic traditions that do not you know, fully make sense to our minds, but we, resorting to the secret of the expression Subhanallah, Subhana Rabbi Ala, Subhana Rabbi Ala Azim, Subhanallah, right? Glory be to God, but implicit in that what we are saying is if there is any defect and deficiency that I am observing or perceiving in existence, in myself, outside myself, in existence, that is because of my deficiency, my limitedness, my inability to understand, grasp things, my inability to see the big picture. The matter that I'm dealing with perhaps is in such a high place that I have not been able to climb there yet. Now, the Quran is a you know clear Quran. It is understandable to all. All uh, there are uh, there are verses that are uh, mutashabih that that are uh, that do not have explicitly clear meanings, and their meanings are hidden in various wa ways for for people, angels, for those who are given their understanding, right? But other than that, the muhkam ayat, the word here is if you remember and the verse is ahkimat these have no ambiguity depending on the or de depending on the context the circumstance in which it is being received it provides the full and perfect and definite and clear message that that context and circumstance necessitates so these are the verses with definite meanings the mutashabihat the you know smaller uh, amount of uh, the, the smaller number of verses uh, we can sometimes refer to them as like ambiguous uh, verses the ambiguity right is again for us for some people or for the majority of people who do not have the necessary skills or capacity or closeness or openings to understand them for those who have been who have attained that closeness and opening they too are clear right so when we think this way we add the mutashabihat into the picture too by considering the audience and and the the ones in the audience who can understand them clearly right all of the verses of the quran become clear muhkam. now this does not mean that they have they can be or should be understood literally and single-mindedly in just one way no there is an enormous and miraculous richness within that clarity and that is the miraculousness of the quran each verse has multiple meanings depending on the audience the station the circumstance etc but within limits there are boundaries and you, it has to be on it has to be understood within those boundaries so as steps to help the hearts that are deficient in the submission and acquiescence needed to climb to the high and lofty truths of the wisdomful quran so if the heart is deficient in its submission and its acquiescence to the veracity of the prophet to the truthfulness and, and reality of revelation then this heart and the one who has that heart in his chest may have difficulty understanding some of the verses even some of the verses and some of the prophetic traditions that have so deep, profound, truthful, um, rich, beautiful meanings may become, may appear to be, to them, may appear to be perhaps meaningless, not clear, uh, not consistent, incoherent, uh, not compatible with the reality that they observe. The problem is with the heart the problem is not with the quran the quran has verses that are perfected 
that are clear that are fortified in its loves and it, it's in its um, wording in its uh, utterance in its sound and in its meaning the quran is perfect so in order to understand this we need to approach the matter from this po point of view with this consideration so how do we attain that how we how do we attain that consideration that approach well one way might be if there are uh, verses out there that have been that have appeared problematic to some and if we go ahead and show how they were wronged by their uh, limited understanding in thinking that these verses are problematic right if you show a few examples perhaps the heart if perhaps even the compulsive soul will be convinced that yeah the, the, the, i had not seen that i had not seen that but look it is actually perfect i was the one who was misunderstanding the matter right so this is like a shock therapy this is a shock therapy to the heart and the compulsive soul i mean satan already knows what it is it is just deceiving us right but the compulsive soul does not know the heart may have may have sicknesses so this is a remedy for the heart we need to take it and apply it in the way that it is prescribed and inshallah it's going to heal our hearts if our hearts have any any suspicion any doubt any hesitation about the perfection the perfect clarity of the wisdomful quran and the prophetic traditions and the and the the beautiful concise uh, meaningful words of the prophet then a lesson with a moral and a secret of solicitude will be expressed in the concluding remarks so there is a there are concluding remarks and then there is a zayl a an addition at the end so we will talk about it when we come there inshallah because the ones among those examples that pertain to resurrection and the hour of destruction are mentioned in the tenth word and especially in the ninth truth there is no need for repetition here so there are other examples that could that could be uh, included in this um, 14th word that are already expressed and elucidated elsewhere in the Risale in Nur. So this is just a sampling of, uh, of examples of verses that for some reason have been challenged or has been have been the subject have, have been subject to controversy and and Ustad Nursi is showing their miraculousness, their beauty, inshallah. However, we will mention five matters among other truths as examples. Birincisi. Mesela, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ اَيَّامِ Altı günde gökleri ve yeri yarattık demek olan, hem belki bin ve elli bin sene gibi uzun zamandan ibaret olan eyyam-ı Kur'aniye ile İnsan dünyası ile hayvan alemi altı günde yaşayacağına işaret eden hakikat ulviyesine kanaat getirmek için birer gün hükmünde olan her bir asırda, her bir senede, her bir günde Fatır Özül Celal'in halk ettiği seyyal alemleri, seyyar kainatları, geçici dünyaları nazar-ı şuhuda gösteriyoruz. Evet, güya insanlar gibi dünyalar da hibrer misafirdir. Her mevsimde Zat-ı Zül Celal'in emriyle alem dolar, boşanır. First, for example, in order to develop full conviction about the lofty truth of خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ اَيَّامِ which means we created the heavens and the earth in six days. And this is uh, from the Quran, the seventh chapter, the 54th uh, verse, right? Which means we created the heavens and the earth in six days and points out that the world of humans and the realm of animals will live six days according to the days of the Quran. And here it's important, right? According to the days of the Quran, which consists of a long time, such as a thousand or perhaps perhaps 50,000 years, we are showing for witnessing and consideration the ever-flowing realms, 
mobile universes and temporary worlds that the majestic one who creates from nothing creates in every century every year and every day each like a day in effect yes it is as if the worlds like human beings are each a guest in each season the realm is filled then emptied with the command of the majestic entity so this of course is a problem and since uh, most people or all people who listen to uh, this podcast uh, speak english and many of them live in non-muslim contexts uh, many of them li live among christians and of course this is a problem that comes up in the in the um, christian um, bible literature too and it is a subject of a lot of controversy there too because there too the six days is mentioned and then some people read this in english or in french or whatever in in the some people are exposed to the discourse that questions this meaning in the bible and some you know among the christians take it literally and try to defend it etc etc six days six thousand years uh, you know some uh, christians believe that the world is six thousand years old and there's nothing beyond that the entire creation the entire existence has, has been for six thousand years etc there is a lot of confusion and that confusion um, seeps into the minds of muslims too again especially for those who live in these non-muslim contexts who are exposed to the discourse the literature and discourse in uh, English, French, whatever that language is about about and against Christianity, right? And then they assume that such nonsense should be binding for Islam too, uh, should affect our understanding of the Quran too, or perhaps they do not even make this jump, but they turn to the Quran and they see it there too, and they think that, oh yeah, so six days, what does that mean? It has, uh, you know, deep meanings. Uh, Stad Nursi explains this elsewhere in more detail six days you know can be understood as six stages right but even if we, even if we were to take it as day right just the word day what does they mean so from our point of view right the human uh, point of view the a day is when the earth uh, rot rotates around itself once which is almost 24 hours so it is an almost 24 hour slightly less uh, period okay so do we then understand should understand from this verse that the world was created the world and the heavens were created in six days perhaps one may say why not but then we observe the universe we observe the earth we uh, now have, have uh, ways of estimating the age of things and the minimum we come to is that the the cosmos or the rather the visible universe that we can observe should be around 14 billion years old okay then how does this add up right well in the quran god also says that by him a year can be a thousand years or fifty thousand years by our calculation so how do we understand that how what does what does that mean well think of the sun if a day is when a terrestrial object uh, rotates around itself once how long does it take for the sun to rotate around itself the sun is way bigger than the earth so it takes way longer it takes longer than the earth in in jupiter uh, some terrestrial objects rotate slower so it takes longer for them some rotate faster they are smaller it takes less for them so the word the concept of a day is a relative term so one might have started this from that point of view that says you know, see these you know people are dogmatic they don't know anything that what they think is the, the truth is challenged by science etc etc but then if we if one were to submit 
with acquiescence, with this reverence and respect and understanding that the Quran is up there. I need to get there. Not that I need to pull it down to where I am, but I need to get there. The Quran is up there, right? Then these meanings start to open up. The Quran is telling us per, or one meaning that can be deduced from this among many meanings one meaning that can be deduced from this is that while the concept of a day is a relative concept there are many terrestrial objects the earth is one of them and the way that they rotate around themselves uh, takes place in different speeds and takes uh, different lengths for each so is this not something that's miraculous how could the Prophet وسلم, if Hasha God you know protect us from thinking that way but if the Prophet وسلم, himself was writing the Quran how could he know that he couldn't we figured it out you know, way later but there's another thing that Ustad Nursi um, points out here it is one thing for those days to be relative it's another thing for things to be created in in those days in those relative terms uh, in in those relative time frames right we are showing for witnessing and concentration i look he's saying look at out there right consider this the ever-flowing realms mobile universes and temporary worlds that the majestic one who creates from nothing creates in every century every year and every day each like a day in effect so think of it we sometimes talk about the let's say the ottoman era right the ottoman empire it lasted for about 600 years well that's a world in itself that's a world in itself and if you take that 600 year period as a time frame that is a day right the world of the ottoman empire was created in that 600 year year time frame um there are geog geographical uh, so, sorry geological eras uh, they say that we now live in the holocene era and they determine this by looking at the uh, you know what happened the latest period in this geological time scale what happened on the surface of the earth the climate the environment the fauna etc etc et and then some come and say well the the holocene that last uh, geological uh, time scale is gone now that time frame is gone now that era had, is over we are actually now living in what one should call anthropocene which is that human beings make such a huge impact on the face of the earth that you cannot leave the definition of uh, this era to the environment to the nature itself you need to take humans into consideration so this is the human age well that's a day that's a stage right or every night if it is a clear beautiful night you go out and you watch the the firmament you see the stars moving from one end to another think of it like a movie right you go uh, to the movies and they project something on the screen it starts and lasts let's say two hours and it ends think of that firmament that you are watching at night because it is not stagnant it's not stationary it, it is moving it starts at a place and then ends in a, another place think of that as a movie a world onto itself every night god is creating a realm that you can watch out there in the in the sky or every spring uh, we will probably say more about that later every spring right the uh, where I am it is winter now most plants uh, died or rather you know went dry uh, they are dormant now they don't have leaves they are they look like they are dry but when the spring comes there will emerge a new world full of teeming with life insects and birds and leaves and fruits and etc etc a new world will be created so is that not like a day in which a new world is created the season the the season of spring right who creates from nothing creates in every century or the majestic one who creates from nothing creates in every century every year 
and every day these ever flowing realms they are not stationary they are not stagnant they they, they keep changing and transforming transmuting into something else all the time and therefore new realms new universes new worlds are coming into existence yes it is as if the worlds like human beings are each a guest in each season the realm is filled then emptied with the command of the majestic entity so there is a there is a um indication there's an indication and there's a subtle indication to this reality too in the in the in the verse that says that god created the heavens and the earth in six days right in each of those time frames something else is happening and within those six days within that uh, in a time frame there are sub frames there are sub frames and you can think of each of those sub frames as a day in which a new realm a new universe a new world is created and then destroyed brought into existence brought out of existence so that a new one can come ikincisi bismillahirrahmanirrahim ve la rabbin ve la yabisin illa fi kitabi mubin وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْسَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ لَا يَعْزُبُ عَنْهُ مِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا أَصْغَرُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْبَرُ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Gibi ayetlerin ifade ettikleri ki, bütün eşya, bütün ahvaliyle, vücuda gelmeden ve geldikten sonra ve gittikten sonra yazılıdır ve yazılır ve yazılıyor. Demek olan, hakikat aliyesine kanaat getirmek için Nakkaş-ı Zülcelal, Ruh-i Zemin'in sahifesinde, her mevsimde, bahusus baharda değiştirdiği nihayetsiz muntazam mahlukatın fihristi vücutlarını, tarihçe hayatlarını ve saatiri hareketlerini çekirdeklerinde, tohumlarında, köklerinde manevi bir surete derc ve muhafaza ettiğini ve zevalden sonra semerelerinde aynen kalemi kaderiyle manevi bir tarzda basit tohumcuklarında yazdığını, hatta her geçici baharda yaş kuru ne varsa mahdut zerrecikler ve kemikler hükmünde olan tohumlarda, ölmüş odunlarda kemali intizamla muhafaza ettiğini nazar uçuhu da gösteriyoruz. Güya her bir bahar bir, bir tek çiçek gibi gayet muntazam ve mevzun olarak zeminin yüzüne bir cemil ve celilin eliyle takılıp koparılıyor, konup kaldırılıyor. Okay. Second, for example, to develop full conviction in the exalted truth that verses such as, again, we are trying to heal the heart, develop full conviction about the truth of the verses of the Quran. The chapters of the Quran, the verses of the Quran, the lines of the Quran, the words of the Quran, the letters of the Quran, even the diacritical, diacritical marks of the Quran. Nothing is left out. There is not a dot that is not wisdomful in its placement in the Quran. So, وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ And not a fresh or dried out thing. This could be translated, translated as wet or dry, but, you know, the, again, the translation belongs to Abdul Halim and he is reliable. And it seems to refer to, you know, the trees when they are green, for instance, and then the trees when they are dry and things like this. And not a fresh or dried out thing, perhaps living and non-living, that is not written in a clear book. This is chapter 6, verse 59. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ We keep an account of everything in a clear record. Imamin Mubin. In the first uh, verse it was Kitabun Mubin. Kitab uh, Mubin, right? Clear book. Here it is Imamin Mubin. Uh, translated as clear record. Right? But it could also be a clear leader, leading thing. And then 
لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض ولا أصغر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب مبين again كتاب مبين here not even the weight of a speck of dust in the heavens or or earth escapes his knowledge nor anything smaller or greater it is all recorded all recorded in a clear book so for example to develop full conviction in the exalted truth that such verses right express and and that they together mean that mean all things are written will be written and are being written in all their states before they come into existence when they come into existence or after they come into existence and after they come out of existence after they are no more so we need to think about this all things everything that i am speaking to a microphone right now for instance that you are listening to what i have spoken to a microphone a while back that it is a day where I am right now. The, the sky is somewhat cloudy. Uh, it is winter time, etc., etc. That I am inhaling now. I inhaled. That I inhaled now. That I um, took a bottle of water in my hand and I'm going to drink it now. Bismillah. That I drank a bottle of water, or a, a, a sip of water. All things, everything, are written, will be written, and are being written in all their states before they come into existence, when they come into existence, and after they come out of existence. So, not only while they are happening, but before it happens, the knowledge of that it will happen, the knowledge of that occurrence is written somewhere. While it is happening, it is being recorded as occurring and after it happens after it occurs it is recorded as having occurred it is mind-boggling do we see things being written around of course this is a uh, this is a matter of the unseen we do not see that kitab mubin that clear book we do not see that imam mubin that clear record yet things of the unseen oftentimes have manifestations in the seen world and those manifestations in the seen world point to the unseen world so if you want to have a full conviction that this is possible and is happening as says we are showing for consideration how the majestic embroiderer packs and preserves in a metaphysical way in kernels seeds and roots the index of bodily existence the biographies and the regulatory principles of movement pertaining to the innumerable and orderly orderly creatures that he replaces in every season and especially the spring in the spring on the page of the earth look at the page of the earth do you want to see that things are being preserved are being written were written are being written will be written do you want to see that right look at the seeds mm. seeds of plants look at the kernels the look at the stones in the fruits look at the roots something is written there there is some information that is preserved there which makes it possible come the spring for the seeds of the plants that were there the past summer to sprout again something is written there something is preserved there in the roots that are under the ground and not visible during the winter something is written there that enables it to grow again in the in the spring and then summer and it is being written and erased and written and erased and written and erased every season here is the example of what you had difficulty believing in he replaces in every season and especially the spring on the page of the earth it is as if every spring is attached on the face of the earth in an utmostly orderly and proportioned fashion like a flower then detached it is spread out then folded away 
by the hand of a beautiful, majestic one. Hakikat böyleyken, Beşer'in en acib bir dalaleti budur ki, kader kaleminin sahifesi olan levh-i mahfuzun yalnız bir cilve-i aksi olarak fihriste-i sanat-ı rabbaniye olup, ehli gafletin lisanında tabiat denilen bu kitabeti fıtriyeyi, bu nakşı sanatı, bu münfail mistar hikmeti tabiatı müessire diyerek mastar ve fail telakki etmesidir. Eyne zera mine zureyya. Hakikat nerede? Ehli gafletin telakkileri nerede? While this is the reality, it is among the human beings most amazing occasions of misguidance that they deem the creational inscription that is called the nature in the language of the people of heedlessness, and that is an index of the lordly arts as a single instance of the manifestation of the preserved tablet, which is the page of the pen of divine determination. They deem this embroidery of art and these passive line markings of wisdom to be sources and active agents, calling them the effective nature. Where is the earth? Where are the seven sisters? Where is reality? Where is what the people of heedlessness deemed to be true or deemed to be true? Um, so while this is the reality, what is the reality? That there are examples visible occasions and examples of preservation all around us in in the seeds in the kernels in in uh, the roots uh, memories etc everywhere it is everywhere and they together point to a higher reality of preservation <laughs> and this preservation is the preservation of the knowledge divine knowledge and divine wisdom Right, the source is there. The source is divine knowledge and divine wisdom. While this is the reality, it is among the human beings most amazing occasions of misguidance. So human beings think that something is something, but they are wrong. They are misguided. Plus, they are guided. I.e., they think that they are guided. They deem something true, accurate but falsely so, that is compound ignorance. They, they, they, they are guided, by, but they are misguided. They should not be doing it, but they don't even recognize the problem in what they are doing. It is among the human beings most amazing occasions of misguidance that they deem the creational inscription. So there is creational inscription. Creational inscription. Things are written before they come into existence. They are written when they come into existence. They are written after they come out of existence. And this is the, the process of creation. Right? They come into existence. They are in existence. They come out of existence. This is the process of creation. And that is accompanied by an inscription. And the creation itself is an act of inscription too. So it is what we are observing is creational inscription. But it is called the nature in the language of the people of heedlessness. Now the word nature in and of itself could have been innocent if it was used in the way it is supposed to be used, right? Uh, in, in Arabic, for instance, or in, from Arabic in, that moves into Turkish, the word is tabia, And that means literally uh, printed or impressed or typed like when if you have a typewriter you uh, you know hit the uh, button and it prints something that is tabara and tabira is that which is uh, you know, printed or impressed in that way so it is a passive thing right so the original word in arabic if we were to think about the original conception meaning of the word it preserves reality but the the, the way it is now being used in the language of the people of heedlessness, that's, a, that's something else, right? So that is, that is called the nature in the language of the people of heedlessness. And that is, so that creation inscription is an index of the lordly arts, a list of the lordly arts, like take an uh, index or contents of a book. Imagine the contents of a book. You have a book and then at the end of the book you have this uh, you know one or two pages of the contents of the book or you may even have a 
index فهرست uh, where the keywords all the keywords in the book are listed and then you have their page numbers and then you can reconstruct the book from that right that is an index of the lordly arts as a single instance of the manifestation of the preserved tablet so all this stuff that we think of as the nature when you look around and see at the given moment right is a single instance of the manifestation of the preserved tablet what is the preserved tab tablet it's it is mentioned in the quran we do not know the actual quiddity of it what it is but we know that everything is written there which is the page of the pen of the divine determination qadr or qada uh, the the ash'ari and maturidi uh, schools of thought in theology uh, use these two words in interchangeably for like uh, some call qada uh, one calls qada that the other calls qada and one calls qada that the other calls qada but doesn't matter the notion the idea is the same divine determination everything is determined everything is measured out by god there is nothing that happens beyond what god determines measures out and what he measures out he inscribes on the preserved tablet and what we see around us being inscribed in the creation is a manifestation is a reflection of that which is inscribed in the preserved tablet so this is the reality of this is how it works god has knowledge of everything he wills what is in his knowledge into existence his power creates it and the, and and and through the uh, through the application of power it is created and it is inscribed into existence according to the divine determination that is in his knowledge right and he inscribes all of that in the preserved tablet in a timeless manner now the preserved tablet is created so in in that sense time does apply to it it it comes into existence from non-existence right however what happened what is happening and what is to happen from our point of view from our human perception uh, which is limited and bound by time and space right so those past present future those concepts apply to us they're all written in the preserved tablet and the nature is nothing but a manifestation of the creation inscription that is uh, that comes from the preserved tablet okay so what do human beings do they call it nature and then they deem this embroidery of art right the embroidery of art the manifestation of the divine names and attributes of god in the beautiful wisdomful intricate masterful way in the existence right they deem this and these passive line markings of wisdom the passive line markings of wisdom what does that mean you take a, a ruled book and you start writing on it the rules the lines the line markings helps help you to keep your lines straight if those lines were spiraling and sometimes you have things like that too like kids play uh, imagine that you have uh, line markings on a uh, on a page that are spiraling so you start writing from the very and the, the outside of the spiral and you keep writing toward the sentence or perhaps you start from the center and you keep writing outwards in the end you would have a spiral inscription right that existing line markings help you keep your line straight or spiral or whatever those lines are right that is nature right it those line markings do not write the the letters if it is you who is writing a pen writes it your hand holds the pen your hand is connected to your arm your arm is connected to your body and your body is connected to your mind to your knowledge and to your will right 
same thing. Nature, God has created uh, everything in existence according to a, an order. A um, you you can think of this as as a universal order, a master order. Everything takes place within this order. He has created the the cosmos according to an order. He could have created in some other way. That's completely within his will, right? But he chose to create it in this way, and within this order, there is nothing that could have happened better than what is. Therefore, it is beautiful too. And then that universal order has manifestations in particulars, in the way that a you know country that's properly governed uh, might have a constitution. And then they have laws, let's say like the civil law, the, uh, the trade law, the international law, the uh, law on land, the law on taxation, right? right? All of those laws have to issue from the Constitution and be compatible with the Constitution. All of those laws are, are inspired by the Constitution, right? And then within those laws, the big, you know, corpuses of law, you have uh, particular articles. And then you can have ordinances and regulations and etc. etc. that depend on those particular articles. So it branches out. But in the end, all of them are all of them combined and are, are synthesized into the Constitution. But the Constitution comes first. So God has created a universal order, and from that branch out all the laws, like line uh, rulings, line markings. For instance, God has ordered that when you drop an apple. On the surface of the earth the apple moves toward the earth or anything when you drop it it moves toward the earth unless it is lighter than air because otherwise the air moves down and that thing will go up the air will lift it up right so this is a law in the sense that it is ordained by the one who creates everything but it is not a law in the sense that it exists in and of itself. This is just the way things are. If there is a law, there has to be a lawgiver. And the law cannot be an active agent. It is the line marking. You write on it. But it is the one who writes, who inscribes the letters. God is the one who inscribes these letters. However, people, out of misguidance, deem this embroidery of art and these passive line markings of wisdom to be sources and active agents, calling them the effective nature. Right? They give it effect, whereas true effect belongs to God and God alone. Now, where is the Quran's description of reality as reality is? And where is this misguided conception of nature which falsely claims it, claims it to be effective, to be the source and active agent? This is a, an Arabic expression. Uh, it, it rhymes. Uh, where is the earth? Thera so, is the earth, a word for earth. And Thraya is uh, a, uh, a star cluster in the, in the sky, in the universe right seven sisters it's one of the very famous uh, star clusters so what that means is that there's so much distance between this and that one is all the way above there representing truth and reality and wisdom and the other is all the way down here in the in the lowly dunya where is reality where is what the people of heedlessness deem to be true this is the quran's wisdom this is the quran's miraculousness this is what you see when you take a look at what the one who knows all, who has control over all, who created all, who disposes all, right, presents to you. No, no, in no other way you can achieve such knowledge that is aware of, that encompasses 
and perceives everything all at once in space and in time. Only God can do that. And therefore, only through the guidance of that divine knowledge, we can access reality, the, the knowledge of reality as reality is. And therefore, we need prophets. When we have that, that guidance, everything fall in place and we look around and, and we see a perfect order and we are inspired and we can start contemplating this and we can, we can move from there to beautiful realities that are manifestations of the, the names and attributes of God and we can acquire knowledge of God, ma'arifatullah, right? But we first need that guidance. And with that guidance, we need to start contemplating this reality that's out there. Üçüncüsü. So we are going to move to the uh, third matter, the, the, the third uh, group of verses that Ustad Nursi is going to comment on. Üçüncüsü. Mesela, hamele arş ve yer ve göklerin melaike-i müekkelleri ve sair bir kısım melekler hakkında muhbir-i sadıkın tasvir ettiği mesela 40 binler başlı her başında 40 binler lisan ve her lisanda 40 binler tazda tesbihat ettiklerini ve intizam ve külliyet ve müs'ati ubudiyetlerini ifade eden hakikate çıkmak için şuna dikkat et ki Zat-ı Zülcelal Bismillahirrahmanirrahim تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْعُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنَّ اِنَّ سَخَّرْنَا الْجِبَالَ مَعَهُ يُسَبِّحْنَ اِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ gibi ayetlerle tasrih ediyor ki mevcudatın en büyüğü ve küllisi dahi kendi külliyetine göre ve azametine münasip bir tarzda tesbihat ettiğini gösteriyor ve öyle de görünüyor. Here we are going to uh, think about or learn about uh, phrases, sections from a few verses, but also a very beautiful and meaningful prophetic tradition. Third, for instance, in order to climb to the truth that expresses the truth about the bearers of the, the, the, the throne or the reality about the bearers of the throne. Bearers of the throne are the angels. Uh, there are different narrations about about them. Some say four, some say uh, more than that. Uh, that are the strongest uh, things in the in the creation, the strongest creatures, and that bear the throne. Now, what is the throne? Of course, we do not know the actual quiddity of that. A good uh, understanding about it is that it is the the the locus of manifestation of the the most tremendous level or station of all of god's names and attributes or perhaps his uh, entity right and it is again mentioned in the quran it is mentioned in the uh, prophetic traditions and there are angels whose job is to carry it now what does that mean in order to carry something you first stand on a ground and then you lift something from that ground right so obviously that that is not going to be the case or that that doesn't that is not how we imagine it right but they carry it out of ta'zim out of showing god's tremendousness and having respect before that uh, be, before that tremendousness right so these are angels for instance in order to climb to the truth that expresses the reality about the bearers of the throne or the entrusted angels of the earth and the heavens so there are Malak al Muakkal, the entrusted angels that are uh, that accompany all things that are created and act in a sense as a conscious representative of those things. So a raindrop that comes from the sky, for instance, that, that falls from the sky, for instance, there is an angel that's accompanying it. That it is entrusted to that angel. Nothing is left alone. Nothing is left alone. Right? The entrusted angels of the earth and the heavens and other angels, such as the one that the voracious reporter has described. The voracious reporter is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Has described, for example, as 
having 40,000 heads with 40,000 tongues on each head and glorifying God in 40,000 ways on each tongue. So this is another angel that the Prophet Sallallahu informed us about. There's an angel that has uh, 40,000 heads. It has 40,000 tongues on each head and glorifies God in 40,000 ways on each tongue. What does that mean? Well, it is an affair of the unseen. We do not know the quiddity, but Ustad Nursi has a beautiful uh, interpretation here. As well as their orderliness, that is the, the orderliness, universality and the breadth of their worship. These are angels, right? As well as the orderliness of the angels, their universality and the breadth of their worshipful slavehood. If you want to understand that, if you want to have a glimpse of this angelic realm, how do we know about that? It is an affair of the unseen realm. How can we know about the unseen? Well, we just talked about it. We can only know or we can only have true and comprehensive knowledge about this. That is going to be incontrovertible. That, that in which we can have full confidence. We can only know it if the one who created them and who knows all informs us about them. And how, that, how does that happen? That happens through his messengers. So we can know about it from God's messenger and then from those who have been given access to such knowledge by God's grace, uh, who are the inheritors of the, the prophets, the saints, or, or Gnostics, or those who have realized that the verifiers, the, the muhaqqiqin, right, the scholars, those who are given knowledge, right? Uh, but the source, the fountainhead of all of this remains the Prophet Sallallahu because he is the one who receives revelation and other prophets before him. Pay attention. In that case, pay attention. If you want to understand this reality, then pay attention to this that the Majestic One clarifies with the verses such as تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبْحُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنَّ Inna sakharna al jibala ma'ahu yusabbihna. Inna aradna la manata ala samawati wal ardi wal jibal. So these are uh, phrases, sections from verses, and the translations might be something along the lines of <coughs> so pay attention to the seven heavens and the earth, and everyone in them glorify him. This is uh, chapter 17, verse 44 in the Quran. The seven heavens and the earth and everyone in them glorify him, God. So the earth, well, it isn't it this inanimate uh, giant ball that is moving around in space? But well, God says it is glorifying God. And then we subjugated the mountains to glorify us with him at sunset and at, at, at sunrise. This is chapter 38, verse uh, 18, uh, referring to, to him here, referring to uh, Dawood alayhi salam. We have subjugated the mountains. Mountains, aren't they these inanimate masses of rock and soil and, and other things? Well, they glorify God. Or we offer the trust to the heavens, the earth and the mountains. So aren't they these inanimate unconscious beings? What can you offer to them? How can you offer something to them? How can you expect them to receive the offer and evaluate it? Quran, chapter 33, verse 72. So there must be something here. So then we look at these verses and understand, understand that even the biggest and most universal among existent beings glorify God in accordance with their universality and in a way that benefit their tremendousness or that benefits their tremendousness and thus he shows us God shows us and it appears to be such so God clarifies this matter in these verses for us he says the earth glorifies God the the heavens glorify God the stars everything in them too right the stars in the heavens glorify God the black holes in the heavens glorify God, the galaxies glorify God, the rocks glorify God, 
and also we you know you know the pebbles in the hand of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for us this might that this might be an abstract concept that we are trying to understand using our intellect and imagination etc but for those who were so blessed to see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and be in his company they saw it with their own eyes they heard it with their own ears he took the pebbles in his hand and they glorified glorified god right the trees glorify god the oceans glorify god the drops of water that fall from the sky when it rains glorify god snow crystals glorify god the air molecules as we talked uh, in the previous episodes glorify god the cells in our body glorify god everything glorifies god so that is the reality but how how do how how how are we um going to wrap our head around this evet bir bahri müsebbih olan şu semavatın kelimatı tesbihiyesi güneşler aylar yıldızlar olduğu gibi bir tayrı müsebbih ve hamid olan şu zeminin dahi elfaz-ı tahmidiyesi hayvanlar nebatlar ve ağaçlardır demek her bir ağacın her bir yıldızın cüz'i birer tesbihatı olduğu gibi zeminin de ve zeminin her bir kıtasının da ve her bir dağ ve derenin de ve ber ve bahrinin de ve göklerin her bir feleğinin de ve her bir burcunun da birer tesbihi küllisi vardır. Şu binler başları olan zeminin her başında yüz binler lisanlar bulunan ve her lisanda yüz bin tarzda tesbihat çiçeklerini, tahmidat meyvelerini alemi misalde tercümanlık edip gösterecek ve alemi ervahta temsil edip ilan edecek ona göre elbette bir meleki müekkeli vardır. So Üstad Nursi explains, Yes, as the suns, moons and stars, stars are the words of glorification of these heavens. So for human beings, what is a word of glorification? It is what comes out of our mouth. We say Subhanallah. What is what is that? That's the vibration of air. So it has a material aspect to it, right? It is a vibration of air. Well, then the movement of the sun is pretty similar to the vibration of air molecules because air molecules are moving uh, shaking and moving the sun is uh, rotating around itself and uh, and and and moving in the uh, milky way galaxy right yes as the suns moons and stars are the words of glorification of these heavens which are a glorifying ocean these heavens are a glorifying ocean an ocean a, a huge vast mass m a s s mass of things that move together and that work in harmony a glorifying ocean the heavens and the moons the suns the stars are are the words of glorification that are uttered articulated in that ocean so are the animals plants and trees the utterances of praise of this earth which is a glorifying and praising bird a bird you know a flying object right fire is bird but he, here we could also understand this as a, a flying uh, object so it is a it, it keeps flying around glorifying god in that case as each tree and each star has a particular glorification so do the earth and all of its continents all, all of its mountains and creeks and its and its lands and oceans and the heavens and all of their layers and constellations each have a universal glorification the heavens all together have a universal glorification and within the the heavens let's say one of the words of glorification of that universal glorifying heavens is the sun the sun is also a glorifying flying object and it has words right the earth is one of the, those glorifying words of the heavens and the earth in it has many words animals plants and trees many utterances try to imagine this try to bring this all together in your imagination this 
earth with thousands of heads has an entrusted angel accordingly with hundreds of thousands of tongues on each of its heads who translates and demonstrates the hundreds of thousands of different types of glorification flowers and praise fruits so try to imagine this now we said that <clears throat> the earth is a word of glorification flying like a glorifying bird in the heavens right but then when we zoom in we see that on earth are many many things that have their particular glorifications earth as a universal earth as this larger body has a glorification that is becoming it that becomes it that is worthy of it it is a universal one right but then when you zoom in further each tree each mountain each uh, continent each ocean each river everything right they each have their particular glorifications and if you were to zoom in even further then you could see that the tree has a universal glorification that is the glorification of the tree but then each flower that blossoms on the branches of that tree each fruit that the tree bears has its particular glorification too so this earth with thousands of heads has an entrusted angel so all that glorification now needs to be demonstrated presented announced before the one whom everything is glorifying or to all other conscious beings this earth with thousands of heads has an entrusted angel accordingly with hundreds of thousands of tongues on each of its heads who translates and demonstrates the hundreds of thousands of different types of glorification glorification flowers and praise fruits in the realm of similitudes and represents and announces them in the realm of spirits so have you understand what that angel might be pointing to that angel with hundreds of thousands of heads or or thousands of heads and thousands of tongues in each head and glorifying god in thousands of ways on each tongue evet müteaddit eşya bir cemaat şekline girse bir şahs-ı manevisi olacaktır eğer o cemiyet imtizac edip ittihad şeklini alsa onu temsil edecek bir şahsı manevisi, bir nevi ruhu manevisi ve vazife-i tesbihesini görecek bir meleki müekkeli olacaktır. Yes, if numerous things gather in a congregation, they will have a metaphysical personality. If that gathering merges and takes the form of a unity, it will have a metaphysical personality that will represent it, a sort of metaphysical spirit and an entrusted angel that will fulfill its duty of glorification so if you we can imagine this let's say a uh, tree right a tree is a combination of lots of nitrogen atoms atoms uh, lots of carbon atoms lots of i don't know potassium and phosphorus atoms and you know other elements and if it disintegrates, it would become, and it does become, when it merges into uh, soil, disparate and numerous molecules and atoms, right? However, when they all come together and merge in unity, they become a tree. And then we refer to it, we conceive it as a single unified entity. If numerous things gather in a congregation, they will have a metaphysical personality. So the tree has a metaphysical personality. It has a concept in this case. If it is a conscious being, then it would have a personality. Uh, you know, Mustafa Tuna has a metaphysical personality. Anybody who has conscious has a metaphysical personality. If that gathering merges and takes the form of a unity, right? So if Mustafa Tuna was the share all, shareholder of a company, and all the shareholders of this company came together and unified 
they would have a metaphysical uh, entity, a metaphysical personality that has a uh, an independent standing, let's say, in, in, in a court or in a business deal. It is recognized to have an in to have an independent existence a separate existence right so if that gathering merges and takes the form of a unity it will have a metaphysical personality that will represent it a sort of metaphysical spirit and an entrusted angel now this is the you know key here an entrusted angel that will fulfill its duty of glorification all the things that are on the face of the earth all the trees all the rocks all the rivers all the everything when they come together together and also the crust of the earth the core of the earth everything in and on earth when they all come together we perceive it as this thing called the earth with a capital e that earth has an independent entity a separate entity and that entity has an entrusted angel that fulfills its duty of glorification that demonstrates translates that glorification how does the earth glorify god when i glorify god i say subhanallah that's in arabic i say subhanallah in turkish too but then in english when i try to translate this i say glory be to god here I translated the meaning of subhanallah from Arabic into English. Well, the earth is glorifying according to its language, but that needs to be translated and demonstrated in higher realms, in the realm of similitudes and in front of the, the spirits, right? And perhaps also be presented to the, the one who is being glorified. So it is an angel who does this. It is the duty of an angel to do this. Act, act almost like the spirit of the earth. Right? I act as the representative of the earth. Act as the the custodian of the earth. İşte bak, misal olarak bu barla ağzının şu dağ lisanının bir muazzam kelimesi olan bu odamızın önündeki çınar ağacına bak gör. Ağacın şu üç başının her başında kaç yüz dal dilleri var. Ve her dilde bak kaç yüz mevzu ve muntazam meyve kelimeleri var. Ve her meyvede dikkat et kaç yüz kanatlı mevzun tohumcu harfleri emri kun fe yekune malik sani yüzül celaline ne kadar belli bir medih ve fasih bir tesbih ettiğini işittiğin gördüğün gibi ona müekkel melek dahi ona göre alemi manada müteaddit dillerle tesbihatını temsil ediyor. Ve hikmeten öyle olmak gerektir. Here is that Nursi makes it even more concrete. And we can understand from this that he was most likely writing this uh, treatise or this section of the treatise dictating it to one of his students uh, in his room, in his house, where he stayed for about 10 years when he was exiled to the town or, or village of Barla in southwest Turkey. And there is a beautiful, huge giant plane tree and he had them uh, build a little construction on on the uh, the uh, on that tree he would climb there and spend his nights glorifying god and making dua and reading quran etc over there here look as an example look at this plane tree in front of our room which is a tremendous word on this mountain tongue barla is on a mountain that village is you know on a really elevated place on a mountain which is a that tree is a tremendous word on this mountain tongue in this barla mouth and see now think of barla as a mouth and the the mountain in barla as a tongue how many hundreds of branch tongues there are on each of the three heads of this tree so that tree had uh, three larger uh, trunks and then each trunk would branch out how many hundreds of branch tongues there are on each of the three heads of this tree and on each tongue 
branch tongue. Look, there are how many hundreds of well-proportioned and orderly fruit words. And on each fruit, pay attention as you see and hear how so many hundreds of winged and well-proportioned tiny seed letters are eloquently commanding and lucidly glorifying their majestic artful maker who possesses the command of be and it is. Likewise, an entrusted angel is accordingly representing its glorifications, that tree is glorifications, in multiple languages in the metaphysical realm, and that should be so according to wisdom. Beautiful. Beautiful. The tree is no longer just this um, conglomeration of various atoms and molecules that have no meaning it is a living creature it is a conscious being it is a worshipful slave of god in the personality of the angel that is entrusted with the custody of this tree subhanallah Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa akhir da'wahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha